Well, that brings us to our presentation. So now we will hear from Alexander Levy, a principal architect in the design division of the Port Authority's engineering department. Uh, Alexander leads and collaborates on the design of infrastructure for cycling and walking, mass transit and aviation, focusing on innovation and placemaking, accessibility and connectivity. Uh, Mr. Levy will, will be introduced by Jay Sheffield, the Port Authority's representative on this board. So, Jay. Thank you, Chairman Bartlett. It's always great to be here at NJTPA, and it's a pleasure to provide an update on this project that we've worked on for so long. You, you've all been hearing about it off and on for the past few years. Now, NJTPA coordinates regional transportation planning primarily for the use of federal funds. The George Washington Bridge doesn't use any federal funding due to limitations um, associated with the tolls. So the $2 billion program that we're continuing to rehabilitate this engineering landmark, which is approaching the end of its uh, first century of service, is funded entirely by Port Authority revenue. Nonetheless, the George Washington Bridge is of interest for NJTPA due to its regional significance. It's the world's busiest vehicular um, bridge. It's the region's primary goods movement corridor. And for today's topic, it's the only direct crossing over the Hudson River between New Jersey and New York for pedestrians and cyclists. For a long time, Port Authority operations staff and transportation engineers worked hard to keep the bridge open to both pedestrians and cyclists with a high degree of safety despite the existing conditions that were built decades ago. But real physical improvements were really needed. And as you're about to see, we have invested in significant steel and concrete infrastructure. In a prior position at the Port Authority, I had the opportunity to work on the initial planning for the bike and pedestrian improvements. A frustration I think many planners have experienced is working on a good plan that you know had a good vision, had buy-in, Resources were committed and projects moved forward, but then something just got lost in design and it didn't turn out very well after so much work by so many people. Fortunately, this is not one of those cases. This project went the way planners always hope their plans turn out. I was fortunate to turn it over to a good design team that saw the vision and filled in the design details to make this a reality that works well for everyone who uses it. This was due in part to ongoing collaboration after the handoff, and largely due to the fact that Alex is a cyclist himself who grew up using the bridge. So at this point, I'll turn things over to Alex. Alex, all yours. Thanks, Jay, and thanks, Chair Bartlett. Uh, thanks so much uh, for giving us the opportunity to talk about um, the George Washington Bridge. I'm gonna try to advance the slide and make sure that it works. There we go. Can, can you all see the screen? Yes, we can, Thank Alex. Yep. Okay, thanks, Ted. Thank you. So, you, you, everyone on this call knows the uh, knows the port district and the region. This is a graphic we use to describe a lot of our assets and our facilities throughout the throughout both obvious, obviously both states and beyond. Uh, beyond this map, obviously, we have uh, Stewart up, Airport up in uh, in Rockland County. Uh, it's sorry, in um, near uh, Beacon on the uh, on the other side of the Hudson. Um, let's focus today on the George Washington Bridge uh, in the Palisades on both sides of, of the river. As Jay said, yeah, this is one of the miracles of this bridge is that it, its location, right? That it, it was it somehow it was chosen fortuitously to have the, I would say for its navigable height for, uh, for very large ships, it was able with very little uh, uh, approach length to to span a mile and a half without needing tremendous ramps like we do on many of the other regions bridges. Um, it's a, it's actually I mean it's something that we we take for granted. But the fact that we're up in the Palisades on the, uh, in Fort Lee and then up in Washington Heights on the other side makes for a, a natural bridge uh, across the river. Um, and what was missing in this bridge for the last hundred years really is an accessible way to cross if you're not using a car. And that's what we set out to do. Um, as you can see in this photo on the right, uh, Althmar Aman, uh, who was the original engineer of the bridge while at the Port of New York Authority, um, envisioned having a sidewalk, but the sidewalks originally went from Anchorage to Anchorage. They did not connect back. Strangely enough, they did not connect to back on both sides to the to their respective uh, approaches, their respective launching points. So there was this miraculous sidewalk, but it was disconnected. 
uh, you needed to climb stairs, uh, go through a turnstile and climb stairs to get to the sidewalk. So um, now with this, I'm hearing feedback, I guess we'll, we'll find out who, who that's from. Yeah, someone, yeah, someone just joined by phone. Sorry about that. Okay, no problem. Um, there's a bigger context here that uh, all of you are very aware of, which is uh, a, a very large multi-year program to, uh, as Jay mentioned, to restore the George, right? And, uh, and what it did is it gave us the opportunity, among other things, not only to replace the suspender ropes and, and check the main cable and, and do a whole bunch of upgrades, it was to finally consider accessibility across the bridge for people walking, uh, uh, you know, making their way across without a car. Um, many of you have had the opportunity since February, we opened the North Walk uh, on Valentine's Day. And now this North Walk has been an incredible, uh, it's the use has shot up. There's an incredible amount of uh, volume, even during the week. It's not just a leisure bridge. It's now become a, a, more than ever a commuting, a commuting connection between, between the two sides of the river. Uh, delivery cyclists obviously are using it as well. There's a new demand uh, catchment area. But let's go back to the ADA, which to, to us was the starting point of how we wanted to make the sidewalk reconnect to its environments on either side of the river and allow people to go unassisted across without any need for uh, actual ramping. Uh, we made very, very shallow approaches to touch, uh, to connect to the main span sidewalk so that someone can go unaided in a wheelchair and make their way across the, the, the Hudson. Um, I'm just gonna go quickly through the phases. Uh, 2017 through 2023 is what we just experienced. Uh, we've been, uh, we left the South, the existing South Walk open that all of you know very well. Who, those of you who've used the hairpin turns and the, and the strange uh, vehicular ramps that you have to share uh, to get across the river. Uh, that remained open for the last several years, and now it's just been closed. We're working on it now in, in, in phase two. Um, this is our phase two. So we're, we have the North Walk, the new North Walk open, which everyone is, is enjoying. And we have the South Walk under construction, along with the, uh, the replacement of all the suspender ropes and the widening of the towers, which I'll get to very soon. Hold on. And then our uh, a final phase, which will be uh, which will be its permanent uh, operations, will will separate cyclists uh, uh, and and pedestrians north and south, like we do in many of the other uh, area bridges, like uh, Williamsburg Bridge and uh, and Manhattan Bridge. We'll have uh, cyclists riding, continuing to ride on the north side, and we'll have people in wheelchairs and uh, and on foot using the south side. So they'll, it'll, it'll actually make for an even safer condition after 2027. I don't know if any of you remember what I'm about to show you, but I'm gonna go through very quickly and show you previous conditions and new conditions so that you understand just how, mu how much of a difference we, we can experience on the bridge today. Uh, it used to be that whatever connections there were to main span, uh, were navigated largely through stairs or, or hairpin turns or very steep sections. And I do remember often carrying my bicycle over my shoulder when the North Walk was the one that was open because the South Walk was closed to for maintenance. And I do remember taking a spill down an entire flight of these stairs myself and breaking my collarbone. So I, I remember it extremely well. Uh, the condition on the right now is a very gentle slope but this is the New York approach. And we've used a contrasting color rub rail that helps with the visual field, even for people. It's not only for people who have visual impairments, it's for any user going a certain speed, they're able to navigate haptically and see what, what they're doing and where they're going. Uh, it, it creates, it promotes safety. Um, previous condition at the hairpin turn on the South, uh, we all remember these incredible jams of people going down and coming up it was in some sections it was only two and a half feet wide. Uh, now we have this beautifully generous uh, switchback on the Jersey side, which is 14 feet in the turn and 11 feet at the, at the lanes uh, as you reach the switchback. A lot of room to turn uh, in two directions. Uh, 
I'm sure many of you remember the, the weekend morning gatherings of all the cyclists who want to go up to Pier, Piermont, Nyack, uh, West Point, uh, and 9W and River Road, and they would just gather on the streets pretty dangerously, actually, because cars would be coming at full speed around these corners. Uh, now we have a plaza. We have entry plazas on both the New York and New Jersey side. This is a, a depiction of the New York Plaza at Cabrini and 180th Street with bollards, a uh, pylon to tell you where you are, and a gate that you know, gives you a sense of the placemaking. And it marks George Washington Bridge, so there wouldn't be any uh, confusion that you're about to connect to the, uh, to the, the George Washington Bridge itself. Um, we all remember the Southwalk arrival in Fort Lee, where you just pass a vehicular gate, the wide, where the oversized vehicles would, would gather at night with their permits and, and drive over the bridge. Um, this is where we used to go through. And now we have placemaking happening. This is the North Walk on President's Day earlier this year. Uh, snapshot of the first site, some of the first cyclists. To, these, were, these were tourists from overseas who were using uh, using this on the President's Day weekend and asked me to take a photo of them. Um, our previous condition on the uh, main span sidewalk had just a, a parapet, uh, the, the original parapet and a lot a, sort of a chaos of, of, of use with, with not that much indication of, of not only rules of the road, but also kind of uh, visually your visual field, how you were moving. Now we have a much clearer sense. We have a safety fence. We've got a, a continuous rub rail. We have markings, and we have uh, speed. Uh, we have uh, guide guidance for speed and and upcoming obstacles. This is a clinch. This is a very important element of the main span. It's the tower widening. It, it was a late breaking element in the uh, in the design before we we started construction. Where we managed to uh, figure out with structural uh, a way to add platforms around the towers to make uh, maneuvering around the towers and through the towers much safer than, than it has been in the past. Um, people come at a diagonal, they see each other, they have a lot of visual uh, distance and continuity, they see people around turns uh, and they can come. It, and, and you'd think that people start to go faster. It's not what happens. What happens is, is you've got a lot more sight sight lines and safe behavior uh, because you have, instead of having a constant line through the middle of this, like a territorial uh, division, you basically have a suggestion of a shared, uh, which is what we're trying to promote, this idea of a conscious shared use environment where, uh, where you, you see other people coming, you respect the distance, you monitor the distance as you, draw, as you go, you keep your handlebars away from theirs, and you move through, and you and you and you take in these incredible sites of the Palisades while you're doing it. Um, so I'm now going to go into elements that I that uh, give give this the character it has, and, and sort of this centenary celebration of the bridge. Now with this new placemaking character that we try try our best to give to the bridge. On the left, you have the entry plaza in New York City. Uh, at Cabrini, again, I said Cabrini Boulevard and 180th Street, it plugs directly into the street grid. It's quite, it's quite amazing. You come down 180th and immediately right off the other side, you have this plaza and the street continues uh, onto the bridge uh, at less than 5% grade, which is great. It doesn't require landings. It doesn't require uh, handrails of any kind uh, if you're in a wheelchair. Um, then on the right, we have the Fort Lee entrance, so North Walk. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, long uh, rectangular entry with uh, a bypass stair that goes up to the uh, a viewing platform, which we'll talk about soon. And then these switchbacks that get you, again, less than 5% grade all the way up past the, along the Palisades wall and past even the long path entrance, which I'll show you soon. Uh, for those hikers who like to connect to the hiking paths, uh, they go up to Albany, all the way up to Albany, 350 miles of it. Uh, and I'll show that in a minute. Um, this is a, a, a grouping of, of the viewing platforms and interpretive displays that we've added to this uh, journey that make it more of a, a, a emblematic of its landmark status and the, and the fact that it's, uh, it has a narrative uh, that accompanies it, a history and a future. So one thing we did design 
um, our in-house uh, ourselves as well, along with everything else you see here, is a medallion, 60 inch cast stainless steel medallion that has the geometry of the cable section of the, of the cables that were developed by the Roebling company. Um, and it's two states of the braid, right? So it's a cut and then it turns and then the, the cut is seen in, in bas relief. And that sits at all the viewing platforms on the, on the, on the shared use path to, to uh, memorialize and, and celebrate the, uh, this feat of, of engineering uh, the, of the suspension of these bridges, not just George Washington, but the, many of the bridges of the region, uh, and, well, and, and the country. Uh, we have uh, obviously we've uh, we've been we've embedded in granite. We put the New York and the New Jersey uh, uh, state signs at the at the at the border and the main span. Uh, we have uh, branding signs on the back of uh, signs that tell you how fast to go or, or that a turn is coming. On the back, we actually call out GWB with that with that cable section uh, graphic. Uh, and then we have these bypass stairs with lighting uh, that help you even at night. I've even seen since February, I've even seen cyclists who are so impatient to use, uh, some of them don't wanna use the switchbacks, they simply carry the bike up the stairs. But you know what? Choosing to take the bike up the stairs is one thing, having to was another. So I'm, I'm perfectly happy uh, if I were in some rush to on a commute, I might contemplate carrying my bike up the stairs too. Uh, this is the Jersey side with the Palisade Rock to your left, uh, looking at the New Jersey Tower in the distance. Uh, and here's a here's a sign on the main span that talks to you about the towers coming, uh, gives you a heads up uh, heads up warning that you're going to have to be uh, you know changing direction to get into the towers. Um, as you can see from these photographs, uh, there's some, there a lot of pains were taken in design to make sure that this works uh, safely without signage, meaning everything points towards a safe journey as you move the speed that you naturally are moving at whether it's on, uh, on foot or by bicycle or on, in a wheelchair, or even as a child in a push bike. Uh, you have this, uh, again, I think these, uh, lime, these federal uh, bike lane, lime green rub rails are a constant on the approach paths that reach the main span. Uh, we have mixing zones that we design with our traffic uh, engineering colleagues, uh, uh, cross hatching. It's, it's, it's familiar for those who have been in gridlock uh, Sam's neighborhood in New York City, where you have midtown uh, gridlock uh, hatchings at the at, at the uh, at the intersections. This really speaks to something slightly different, which is caution in the zone where people are walking and biking uh, coming off the viewing platform. Uh, more of more of these uh, more of these uh, pieces of vocabulary. We have bollards where people really have to get off and change uh, change. Uh, locomotion, right? If someone's on a bicycle and wants to use the viewing platform, they pass the bollard, they get off, they walk their bike onto the viewing platform. And the bollard helps them understand that. Uh, it al also helps control maintenance vehicles from you know, entering and exiting at too, too high a speed if they have to remove snow or other things. Uh, the photo on the upper left is from the long path stair that goes to the Palisades Interstate Park long path system, trail system and connects down to our, uh, one of our switchbacks on the Jersey side. Um, and you see the same one lower right-hand side, it's seen the stair from the path itself looking up into the Palisades with the trees. It's, it's kind of surreal to walk up a, uh, an urban stair right up into a forest. So it's, it's, a, it's a very beautiful connection. I'm, I recommend that everyone try it. Um, now I'm gonna, for those of you on the call that really want to see the design and how much we improve this, this uh, shared use path on the North Walk, we're focusing on the North Walk as it's the one that just opened uh, this, this year. So this, this is a diagram showing all the pinch points, all the stairs, all the underpasses, all the uh, areas that we really, really have suffered for the last few decades uh, of trying to get onto the main span as, as a non-motorized uh, user of the bridge. Uh, the hairpin turn that you've seen photos of is on the south side, but we're going to focus on the north side today. This is the, the design condition where we connect to Cabrini in 180th. We have a plaza. We go through a nice, gentle question mark turn and end up, um, end up at a, a viewing platform, an elliptical viewing platform that we can peel off the path uh, to use and enjoy looking at the Palisades and the bridge itself. 
then come back on uh, to the to the bridge path and uh, go all the way to the anchorage in the main span. Uh, we just talked about this. Uh, I'll I'll continue. This so I'm going to go through a series of these where we have a previous condition, a design condition, and then the current condition. It's kind of a three-step process. Bear with me, but visually it's very strong. Uh, this is this is what used to happen at Cabrini in 180th. We look at a kind of uh, tree line and bare claw fence and a, and a playground, but no connection to the bridge here uh, in, in this view. Then we, this is what we were designing. This was a rendering we had made uh, in-house several years ago, uh, trying to envision how we were going to get ourselves to the main span. And then now this is the, the, the reality as of February. Um, here's the viewing platform uh, to the right that we added. Uh, here's the, this is the vehicular HR that uh, uh, the um, one of the ramps that allows motor vehicles onto the bridge. We followed we after curving off Cabrini, we turn and then we we join the side of that and cantilever off it and then go to the uh, and go to the anchorage. We'll show you in a minute. But you see in the distance these stairs. These were the old Northwalk stairs under the vehicular path that would then take you up onto the uh, main span sidewalk. Um, I'll show you what the main condition is now. This is, this is the viewing platform, I guess this past February, just before opening. And we have an interpretive display, a set of interpretive display panels that talk about the history of the bridge with some that are empty for the future of chapters of the bridge uh, for, its, for its upcoming chap, you know, uh, North Walk, uh, South Walk opening in 2027 and beyond. Uh, New Jersey side, I'm sure many of you are familiar, those who used to use the long path, there was uh, an overpass and I'll show that to you now. And it had many different pinch points uh, and places to take a spill with a bike on your shoulder. Uh, this is now the condition, the design condition. We have a big plaza at, at uh, Fort Lee on, the, on Hudson Terrace and I'd like to, for those of you in New Jersey DOT, I, I'm sure you appreciate what's happened. We, uh, we offered, and I think we've integrated an entire upgrade of, of the biking infrastructure of, of, uh, of Hudson Terrace um, uh, down to the Fort Lee Historic Park, widening of the sidewalk, a, a bi-directional bike path, e uh, good markings. We've even uh, upgraded this intersection uh, to two-step with, with pedestrian and cycling. This is gonna be the first time in my memory as a cyclist that one can come down from your, from your you know, 50, 100 mile bike ride and actually cross safely at the end of the beginning of your bike ride onto the bike path. I've always taken my life in my hands crossing this, this zone here uh, since I can ever remember since I was a child. And this will be the first time that you can do this safely with, a, with an actual uh, light that is made for your turn. Uh, onto this plaza. Uh, and then you have the switchbacks if you're uh, on a bicycle or in a wheelchair. And if you wanna take the shortcut stairs as a hiker, you can climb up and go uh, through the viewing platform past to the long path stair here and then walk into the Palisades. Uh, again, up closer, this is, shows you that, that uh, the connection to, to the long path. Here was the existing condition in the last five to 10 years. Um, here is the designed condition where we opened up a, a big plaza, created a cantilever near the, one of the lower level uh, approaches, uh, and then uh, had our, and connected to various ways onto the bike, bike and walking path. And here's the real condition at night taken from the, from the air, looking towards New York. A very interesting view here. This is the way we used to get to the long path and used to cross on the north uh, on the north walk. We used to come around the Palisades uh, on foot and then have to climb this set of stairs, walk through this uh, caged overpass, connect to the long path or through another stair, and then climb down the stair to come closer to getting to Fort Lee and Hudson Terrace. Now you have uh, you have much much easier ways and unassisted ways of getting around no matter what kind of a user you are, you have a place to stop to contemplate the bridge and the Palisades. Here's the viewing platform during the day with the medallion I was telling you about, the 60 inch uh, diameter medallion, cast stainless steel. 
uh, and, the, and these interpretive display panels that talk about the history of the bridge and the Palisades to your left. And here it is at night. Uh, we, we worked with, uh, with an architectural lighting consultant for, for all this so that we could have the any time after sunset, you could still use the bridge uh, as happily as you do during the day. And just to conclude, I'm sorry it's taken so long, but I, I just wanted to conclude that this is really an unprecedented moment in George Washington Bridge's history to, to connect its original sidewalks to its respective uh, communities that it serves. Uh, so that someone unassisted in whatever mode of uh, uh, non-motorist trans uh, transport that they want to use can make it across this bridge themselves. Um, and you also get to celebrate and understand and learn about the bridge in a way that you hadn't before uh, with interpretive displays and uh, places to rest and look at the towers. Thank you very much. <laughs>